So people are saying that Robin, they knew that this Sam guy didn't really exist, or maybe they didn't know Sam was a catfisher, but they're the ones that set Mary up. And then fast forward to when Mary on the show, you guys all remember this several seasons ago in 2016, Mary was like devastated, realizes she's been catfished. And the scene where Cody and Robin find out, people have analyzed, look, I, got, I like these shows, but I don't even have this much fucking time on my hands. <clears throat> People have analyzed their body language, Cody and Robin's body language, and say that Cody's non-emotional reaction and Robin's eye movements give away that they knew that before Mary that Sam was not really a man. I dug down this rabbit hole. <clears throat> I think it's very hard to prove. I, I mean- I, I'm not a conspiracy person. And the only part of this story I think that has any merit is maybe they had also heard, Cody and Robin had also heard about Sam and did say to Mary, why don't you talk to him about getting in business? And then Mary ends up having this emotional relationship with who she thinks is a guy, but turns out to be a woman. I don't think it was calculated and set up. And it certainly looks like everything that I've read online. And you guys obviously love Sister Wives too and have a lot of deep information. If you have something different, please let me know. I, I just don't see it. Um, <clears throat> last week, as I mentioned, I didn't get to do my sister wives like recap and what was going on in 90 Day the Other Way because Gabe from 90 Day the Other Way was on. But a lot of people were making a big deal about a recent picture that Christine put up with Truly and a bracelet on Truly's wrist that said lonely. <clears throat> was this a cry for help? I don't think it's a cry for help. Um, to me, it looks like she had a series of bracelets on I don't know if Lonely was just like one of them. I mean, Christine seems like such an attentive mom. I would think if there was something going on with Truly that Christine knows about it, I, I don't think it's going to be shared right now, maybe shared on the show. Um, but a lot of people were reading into that bracelet a lot. A lot of people have been reading into a lot of shit on Christine's um, Instagram pictures. I just don't find Christine as a calculated, um, you know, putting up the middle finger to Cody like at Disney, I just don't, or at Harry Potter world or wherever the fuck they were. I don't see Christine as calculated and I don't see truly as asking for help through a bracelet on Instagram stories. Sorry. Or Instagram feed. I just don't. Anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now we are getting more confirmation about sister wives season 18 when it will drop the president of TLC, Howard Lee. Uh, and Christine Brown sat down for an interview with Variety this week. Both have said the show's coming back. Like, and 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 here heard it here first. Howard also said there is no end in sight for Sister Wives. So you guys, we are getting season after season after season of Sister Wives at this point. Are you in? Are you prepared? Do you want another six seasons of Sister Wives? Because we're getting it. I told you guys from the I told you guys from the start, Cody and Robin will find other wives. They've are they already tried and she dumped the first one dumped them. She like Googled his name and she was like, you know what? I've heard about this narcissist. I'm the fuck out of here. <clears throat> but they will audition new women. Absolutely. <clears throat> Christine's going to have her own life. The wedding is going to be filmed. The engagement was filmed. Christine did say in the Variety article, she's hoping that filming this season will be less awkward. Do we think that this season, this season 18 of Sister Wives is going to be less awkward? I don't, I don't know. Um, I think it's going to be quite awkward. Do we think that Cody, I mean, how much interaction do we think we're going to see with Cody? We know we're going to see a fair amount of Cody and Robin with Mary because there's already been multiple reports. You know, Mary is in touch with Cody and wants to have a friendship. Mary's also left Flagstaff. She's living full-time at that at her bed and breakfast, the family's, you know, the oldest bed and breakfast um, <clears throat> in the state. So we know they're going to have interaction. Is David Woolley, Christine Brown's fiance, going to meet Cody and Robin? I think yes, because Christine has said they're all family. They always will be family. And she's just hoping that filming will be less awkward. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I love it. I love, love, love. So Christine is out and about. She's giving interviews. Um, the other big thing this week was Janelle. So Janelle... 
this woman is living her best life. All these women, and you know, people thought Mary was having a breakdown. She did her live with her girlfriend last Friday night. She seemed a little off. I don't know. Mary seems good to me. I guess my question about sister wives, Janelle and Mary, all they do is quote Mel fucking Robbins. Oh, by the way, I love Mel Robbins. She's, she's like a motivational person. Um, she's like Tony Robbins, but Mel Ro Are they related actually? Is Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins related? If I never known that, if I never put two and two together. Um, <clears throat> anyway, they quote Mel Rob. Mary quotes Mel Robbins all the time, uses all of her sounds on Mary's story, like nonstop. So I want to know if they're getting sponsored by Mel Robbins. That would be like the ultimate. But Janelle put up a motivational post. You know, she's handling that uh, RV camper that she wanted to live in all by herself. She actually makes the joke, you know, finally it'll be hitched up, right? Because we know in last season, Cody couldn't figure that out. Well, Janelle also treated herself and her new home. She has a patio. She said on her Instagram this past week, I wanted a great patio where it wasn't so blazing hot, um, Vegas, so I could sit outside. She's 53 years old and the Instagram star said, so I splurged on some patio furniture this year and I'm loving my coffee on the patio this cool, peaceful Sunday morning. Um, so she's also keeping the trailer. And for those wondering about the trailer, stay tuned. I actually put it into a seasonal space this year and will begin the adventure of managing the trailer as an independent woman. Um, it's been something I've always wanted to do. There you go. So anyhow, she's also on a self-improvement um, journey. She says, Janelle says, you know, Janelle's reportedly lost close to 100 pounds. She says, I'm far from perfect. Let's be honest with each other. Social media can be so brutal. Usually there's so much judgment, but also helpful tips. And uh, she was doing her Pilates workout. They all seem to be leaving, living their best life without Cody. Has anyone gotten a picture of Robin? I want to see what Robin looks like. Like all the women seem like they've lost like 10 years on their faces and 10, like at least 10 pounds. Has Robin gained weight? What's Robin doing? <coughs> People on my TikTok are saying, I can't watch six more years of Mary. I love Janelle and Christine. Good for all of them. Lori, I know they're living their best life. Um, also, Susan says, I never heard the theory that Cody and Robin were behind the catfishing incident. That's crazy, but I wouldn't put it past them. I don't know. That's pretty extreme. I feel like, do we think Cody could keep his mouth shut? If Cody catfished Mary himself, don't we think that Cody would say something? Like, I feel like Cody would find a way where he could manipulate that situation and say that he did it to test her loyalty. And he would think that he was making himself look good, but he wouldn't. I just don't think there's much merit to it. Gwendolyn, of course, Christine Brown's daughter, who has a very thriving YouTube show, subscription only, P.S., make those coins. See, I said at the beginning, like, they don't make a, a lot of money. I guess there are ways. I'm kind of a moron. Um, but Gwen says that she's, you know, Gwen on her YouTube this week essentially said Robin is the one that isn't allowing them to all get together. I mean, it's interesting. Gwen, you know, Gwen, I think, does a good job of showing what family dynamics are really like, which for a lot of us, it's like, you love your family, then sometimes you don't want to be with them. You're trying to deal with all the issues. I kind of got the vibe Gwen doesn't want to see them. And maybe that's true. You know, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. But Gwen says on her YouTube that Robin is the one that doesn't want to allow all the family to get together. And she also says, this was very interesting too. Gwen says the hardest part recently of watching the show, because they've been on for so many years, is now seeing her parents almost be dehumanized and become this just form of entertainment. That was interesting to me. Like, <clears throat> I guess if you've been on TV for 13, 14 years, like they have, you do almost become, she kind of is making the argument that, look, my parents are good people, meaning Christine and Cody. It's just- They've been edited in a certain way for so long now. Now they're almost like not human to people. Do you guys feel like the internet really treats Cody and Robin and Christine for that matter as though like they're not human? I don't know. I mean, I I, I do kind of see that. It's just, uh, yeah, I see that. I see that. And I think people do take it too far for sure. Um, so anyhow, it sounds like Gwen is open to having family and getting the whole, all the kids back together. But right now, Robin isn't allowing it, taking space according to Gwen and, uh, Robin does not want all of them at the house or around her. Mm -hmm. 
interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, Lori is saying there's no way that Cody could plan to catfish Robin. I I agree. I'm so I just I think he's has too big of a mouth and he would try to use it for something. Also, Lori says, I always felt like Robin's kids were kept away from others even before COVID. Well, a lot of people feel that for sure, I think, in watching the show. Um, last night, Tim Malcolm from 90 Day Fiance franchise. I love me some Tim Malcolm. Um, he and Caesar, of course, Caesar from the franchise, you know, Caesar only dates Ukrainian women. They went live on IG and I jumped on their IG live with them. And it was really good. It was really interesting. Caesar, by the way, ended up having sex with an escort. Um, and <laughs> I know you're choking too. You just spit out your water. Caesar says that he tried to date an American woman. Turns out she was an escort. She used to be a Marine. They hooked up and had sex once. And then the next time they basically hooked up and she was like, oh, by the way, um, I got to go do my escort work. And he was like, no, this isn't going to work for me. So, you know, I guess he's back to Ukrainian chicks. Um, Tim was talking about Tim has been, Tim is probably the most high profile 90 day fiance face of the franchise. He's done almost 200 episodes between pillow talk, 90 day single life, all that. I asked him about Veronica and Jamal. You know, Jamal is Kimberly's son, hot son. He says he doesn't like to comment on their relationship because they've got a storyline. He doesn't want to do anything. They're on TV. He doesn't want to do anything to jeopardize their storyline because, you know, they're filming. So we're going to see Veronica and Jamal, more of their story play out. Um, Caesar says that, you know, he's still not a lot of men want to become manicurists. You know, Caesar's like one of the only male, and he said in North Carolina, he thinks he's the only black male manicurist in the entire state. Fun fact, I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Caesar was really great on the live. So was Tim. I like both of them. Oh, and people were coming for Tim. They were like, Tim, stop vaping. Tim was like, fuck you, you're blocked. I don't want you telling me about if I can vape or not. Get the fuck off my live. I appreciate that, honestly. I appreciate both ways. I like when you guys give your opinion. Like, I like it. And then also, like, I don't, but I'm not going to, like, probably take most of it, you know? But I feel like you guys probably feel the same about me. <laughs> I shoot my mouth off all the time. And I do love, and I do enjoy a good debate. I do. And I, I honestly, I don't care. You know, I think people are getting this from my podcast, but if you have differing political opinions, I, I don't understand how you can stop speaking to somebody just because they have different political beliefs than you. That's just my own hot take. My show is quickly def like going downhill from like, it's going from sister wives to Bill Maher, but um, <laughs> I don't care. <clears throat> I just, I, you know, half my family voted for Trump. You think I'm going to stop speaking to them? I love them. They have some amazing aunts and uncles. Doesn't mean I agree with their political takes. So crazy to me. How did I get talking about that? Oh, oh, Tim arguing with people on his live. Okay, going back to that. There was something else that Tim said that was very fascinating. Uh, well, Tim said that more women from the 90 day TLC sister wives beyond, you know, the franchises, they make more money than the men, which makes sense because they can do a lot of OnlyFans stuff. That makes sense. Um, and then Tim also kind of brought up, do you guys think this? Even though 90 Day Fiance and Sister Wives have bigger ratings than Bravo's Housewife shows, people aren't as like loyal following. Like he doesn't, he said he doesn't, he's not like famous like Luann De, De Lesseps, you know, he doesn't get noticed as much as Luann. I thought that was really interesting because it does, the show does have high ratings, but it's like, who watches people that, I don't know, never like meet these people out in real life. I, I guess, I, I don't know. Maybe it appeals to more rural people that are just never going to go to like a 90 day fiance event or something. I don't know. I loved how much of Tammy Slayton and Amy Slayton got huge applause when they went on stage. To me, I'm like, Tammy, you need a fucking stand up comedy show across the country. I'll host it for you. No, currently I'm blocked by Tammy on TikTok. I don't know why I said something. It, I'm so upset. And Chelsea Lynn, like, got to hang out with her first. I mean, Chelsea Lynn's great. But, I mean, I'm like a fucking ride or die. And I didn't get to. What's my opinion on Jen? I can't stand how she speaks. Um, Jen from 90 Day the Other Way. I, I find Jen to be comical. <clears throat> I really do. Like, I find her to be hysterical on the show. I just don't think it's going to end well with Jen and Rishi. Do I find her that annoying? Um. Mm, 
No, I find Nicole the most annoying, actually. She's just so mousy. Sorry, Nicole. Jen just like seems like she and her girls are kind of like a knockoff version of Sex in the City. You know what I'm saying? Like the not as sophisticated one. But I, I just, my only thing with Jen and Rishi is they're just doing way too much on her Instagram. Like it's, they're just defending every little thing. Put it out there, guys. It's a show. You're, you know, you're seeing one part of our situation. I don't get along with Rishi's family, but they just, they're like going in, like he, he does a detailed thing of all the ways he loves Jen and explaining all her things. And then she went on and did a lot. It's like, I don't know. I think Jen and Rishi care too much, which is hard because I think that's going to impact their relationship. I, when I interact with reality stars who begin to like, I guess, take what the audience says as personal, they change. They change, like they start like changing their whole thing, um, you know, the way they behave because they they want to try, they're trying to be liked by the audience. The best reality people, like even if you don't care about Big Ed, because everybody hates Big Ed, but I don't think Big Ed gives a fuck what people think. Tim Malcolm doesn't give a fuck what people think. I think those are the best stars, honestly. Bethany Frankel. Bethany doesn't give a shit what people say. Now, it's easy to do that when you're rich. Because once you're rich, you can't really, like, who cares if you're canceled? Like, no one cares. Ed, I mean, Ed, I would think could be borderline kicked off the show, maybe, if he did something really outrageous. Anyway, um, not annoying, but did she not watch what happened with Jenny and his parents? Oh, oh, oh. Um, she just draws out each word. People don't like Jen's voice. It's monotone. I get that. Yeah, Jen's voice is kind of monotone. I do see that. Um, am I the only one that think Veronica thinks that Veronica still loves Tim? Michelle, I guess you are because Tim addressed this last night on his live. And he says, he says that there's just absolutely nothing between them, that they're totally friends. People want there to be like, people read way more into it. They want it to be something, but there's no chance of Tim and Veronica ever getting together. People say, I love your show, by the way. Thank you for listening to the Sarah Fraser show podcast. I love you guys. All right. Um, Casey loves their relationship. I love Tim and Veronica's relationship too. By the way, the last thing I'll tell you about Tim's live last night, he did say all the gay rumors and trans rumors, because there's been rumors for a long time that Tim is gay or trans. Haven't impacted him, but his parents, I guess, are really bothered by it. So that sucks. Again, I always say this, like if you're on TV and people aren't talking about you, you're doing something wrong. Like you want people to, I mean, if people have, you all know, I'm honored you guys take the time to listen to my podcast because people have such busy lives and so much heavy shit going on in their own families. If you are like concerned about mine, great. I'm doing something right. What do I think about Johan and Danielle? Um, Johan and Danielle, I, I, <clears throat> um, God, what do I think about them? For some reason, I'm like the least interested in them. I don't know why. Um, it's a little weird that, that Danielle wants Johan to meet Talon so badly, her ex. It's just, a, it's just weird. <clears throat> Johan seems a little pussy whip to me. He does. <clears throat> I just don't know why. And he's like, obviously agreed. You know, we're going to see next episode. Johan has agreed to see Talon. Rumor is Danielle F left NYC, owes a lot of money for her tickets. Probably. I could see that. I could see that. Danielle's a trip. Um, they were kind of there. And they're just for some reason, they're the least entertaining to me, I guess. I don't know why. Gabe and Isabel. Gabe and, and Gabe and Isabel, I like a lot too, but they're they're like actually the most normal ones. Oh my God. I want to meet Debbie so bad. I feel so awful for her. I, I don't feel awful for Debbie. <clears throat> Debbie is like 60 something. 60, what'd she say? 63. And Osama is how old? Osama. That's how she, Osama. Osama, get me on this donkey. Ooh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Singing to that damn donkey and falling off that ass. Um, no, I don't feel bad for Debbie. Debbie knew what she was getting into. Give me a break. I'm a donkey whisperer. I just love her. She's so blind. I love Debbie too. I mean, I think Debbie's smart. <clears throat> She's going to find out if he loves her because she wants to stay in Morocco. Who thinks that they're really breaking up? I don't think they're breaking up. I think he's going to woo her back and like he's going to play the long game of getting to America. It's a long game. Anyway, he's he is such a trip to me. Oh my God. I want to be, he, I love like he wants to be an artist in America. 
And he thinks they're going to make money. People pay for art here. They do. Not till you're dead. I know. I love how, thank you, Lori. I love how he thinks that poets and painters make money in the United States. I'm like, oh my God, dude, good luck. Uh, Casey, I hope she goes home too, but I feel like she won't. Why does she refer to herself as Mrs. Debbie? Way to make the age gap super apparent. I know she does. It's kind of weird. Have they boned yet? I like, I, I feel like I missed that part. Lots of times, like I get so bored. The shows are way too long, way too fucking long. These 90 day fiance shows. So there's so many and they're way too long. And I know why there's so many because they make so much money, but it's which good for them. I, I get it. But oh, I, I tune out. So if they have said they had sex yet, consummated the relationship, Debbie and Osama, Osama, Osama is a serpent. <clears throat> um, I like the length of the shows. You do? Oh my God. I can't stand how long they are. People are saying they don't think they had sex. Look, that to me right there, you gotta be boning. It's like Married at First Sight. I can't watch Married at First Sight. If you're going on Married at First Sight, you're you're doing it on your the night of your wedding. How are these people like unsure? You went on a show where you're gonna be getting married at first sight. All right. Love you guys. Listen to the brand new Sarah Fraser Show podcast every single day um, on Apple, Spotify, everywhere pods are played by everybody. Okay, wrapping up the, hold on.